Here is the video of those wildfires as shot by the external cameras from the International Space Station, monitored by the uh, communications and tracking officer and the uh, Cronus officer here in Mission Control. May 2011 through April 2012 was the warmest 12-month period in the U.S. since 1895, when the government first started keeping records. In tiny Norton, Kansas last week, it hit 118 degrees, hotter than Death Valley. By the way, we had 1,800 record high temperatures in the last seven days. Make it 108. Are you kidding me? In Wisconsin, it caused Highway 29 to buckle, sending this SUV flying. The event like we saw on Friday night certainly was very unusual. We'll see smaller scale derecho events that see powerful systems that move across very swiftly, just about mowing down anything in their path. But this particular one covered such a broad area of the Ohio River Valley towards the mid-Atlantic region in a very short period of time, knocking out power to millions of people that have been suffering due to the heat. So they're without power, they don't have water, and it may take a little bit longer for them to have power restored. Tonight, states of emergency remain in Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, and D.C. as one to two million people are still without power and suffering through triple-digit heat. We suffered a hurricane uh, impact without the three to four days of hurricane warning. Meteorologists say the heat wave made the storm much more powerful. We've broken 40,000 daily heat records so far this year. That's twice as many as last year. In a normal year, we should have one record high temperature for every record low. So far this year, there's been 10 record highs for each record low. No parallel, that you literally meant that? I don't think there has been anything quite like this before. What does this say is going on? Well, I think it's, you know, you look out the window and you see climate change in action. This is the way it gets manifested. One of the predictions is not only does it get warmer, but we see more extreme weather events. Welcome to the rest of our lives. It went for at least 20 minutes. It just pummeled. It was unbelievable. And the rain, there was so much rain. I, it was like, it was like being in a disaster movie. It sounded like the house was exploding, Literally. you know, just to put all of this into perspective, Hurricane Katrina knocked out power, in some cases for a very long time, to about 3 million people. This storm knocked out power to 5 million people at one point. 108 in St. Louis, many areas above 100. Look at these temperatures. Cities across the country are breaking all-time heat records right now. Deadwood, heat, drought, you get fire. It's all the way down the hill, dude. Look at this. We got to go. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is crazy. I have never seen anything like this in my life. The animals are freaking out. Our dogs are going nuts. Denise, you've got to see this. Those flames are massive. What's unusual is to see this kind of explosive fire event occur early in the season. Usually this kind of thing will occur later. We always have some wildfires and patches, but we don't expect to see them until much later in the season. And clearly there's going to be an impact. So I'm not, not disputing that increasing CO2 emissions in the atmosphere is going to have an impact. It'll have a warming impact. The, the how large it is, is what is very hard for anyone to predict. And depending on how large it is, then projects how dire the consequences are. This corner we're looking at now, should be, should be eight feet tall. Right now, we've got moderate to severe to extreme drought over a large portion of the grain producing area of the U.S. And what do you want to do to adapt to that? And as human beings, as a, as a, as a species, that's why we're all still here. We have spent our entire existence adapting. Government says the nation's corn crop is in the worst shape since 1988, and it's set prices up more than 35% in just three weeks. And it's only the early part of July. Dave Ibendahl says his southern Illinois farm hasn't seen a decent rain since April 14th. Our corn is just about done for. Uh, I would expect that the yield is going to be 
ridiculously low this year. Changes to weather patterns that move crop production areas around, we'll adapt to that. And the way things are going, it wouldn't be any surprise to me to see a sharp reduction in the American grain harvest because of drought this year. It's an engineering problem and it has engineering solutions. And People fall back in the face of extreme weather on their own devices, which in places like Kenya and Afghanistan are cheap AK-47s and raiding your neighbor's cattle or turning to the drug trade. We'll adapt to that. And this is just the beginning, this kind of summer weather we're having. Welcome to the rest of our lives. Here you see the trend, the global trend of the number of loss-relevant uh, weather extremes, and you see that uh, the number has increased from roughly about 400 of these events in the early 1980s to now uh, about 1,000, so there's a factor of 2.5, a 2.5-fold increase of the number of these events. And if we have a look at the different uh, origins of these events, the atmosphere and the Earth, the geophysical events, and the weather-related events, then you see a big difference. The red line uh, shows the trend of the geophysical events and the blue and green, again, uh, the flood and uh, the wind, wind storm or storm events. And you see there is a big uh, difference. You see that they have gone up by far more. And we only can explain this by a change also on the hazard side, which means a change in the frequency and intensity, and as you have seen in the slide before, we definitely uh, have this. We'll adapt to that. And what we find is that many regions of the globe are likely to uh, experience this permanent emergence of extreme heat uh, over the next four to five decades. And in fact, in the tropics, we find that there's a 50% likelihood uh, in, in many areas that this extreme heat emergence could occur within the next two decades. We'll adapt to that. Outside of the tropics, uh, areas of the United States, particularly in the western United States and along the eastern seaboard, uh, are at risk of, of experience this, experiencing this permanent uh, extreme heat emergence um, within the next uh, four to five decades. We also find that substantial areas of Europe and China uh, uh, face this extreme heat emergence uh, over the next half century. I didn't expect to see changes that were this large. Uh, we're looking at what has been a very rare event for our common experience uh, becoming a, a common event uh, in the relatively near-term future. And what do you want to do to adapt to that? Welcome to the rest of our lives.